I'm Filippo Voltaggio, and I'm having an amazing conversation with Dr. William Tiller. We have talked about so much, and one of the things that I wanted to come back to is you said that the world that we currently live in, unfortunate but true, perhaps, is focused on having us not remember or know who we are. Uh, not consciously. Not consciously. I don't think consciously. I, th I think... Uh, I think it's just their attachment to the foundations of the science that they pursue, uh, this distance time phenomena science. And they're bound up with seeking internal self-consistencies with respect mm. to a huge body of information. They're not seeking truth. I mean, they think they're seeking truth, but really they're seeking internal self-consistency. That's, that's a gauge that they use to measure quality. And so the same with those who may be governing, looking at people yes. as meat, as you were saying, yeah. because that is how th that fits that, that in that model. It fits in that model, and okay. that model that has nothing, nothing in it that can deal with consciousness, intention, emotion, mind, spirit, etc. Okay. It just is incapable. So when people talk about quantum consciousness or quantum mechanics being able to do these things, that, such as in the movie What the Bleep, where I was, Oh, that's right. Uh, that, I forgot that, to mention. That, that was a mistake uh, on their part. They did a lot of wonderful things, and they helped people tremendously, but they left a residue in which people... I got hundreds of letters from young people saying they wanted to study quantum mechanics because they want to do this stuff. Mm. And they I had already to, and are. I had to, and I had to, yeah, but not from a quantum mechanical point of view. Mm. So I had to write back to them and say, look, quantum mechanics as it is, is framed today can't do those things. Mm. Now, with our work, we'll eventually expand quantum mechanics to do those things, but S not today. So I'm having this wonderful conversation with you, and I am learning that within each cell and within in each atom of my cell, I have the potential to create worlds. Yes. And yet, I look outside my physical world, and I see wars, and I see chemtrails, and I see... And we, con we cause them all, collectively. We created those futures. We are responsible. Okay. And we didn't know we were creating those futures. But now we could begin to know. We know. We can begin to know. Yeah. And it takes a long time for, to go from the head to the organism. Okay. You know, you can get a sense of understanding that you know. You now have to reprogram and retrain your body and all those things about you in order that you are breathing what you believe. So, by breathing what I believe, I can change what that is. You can change your part of it. And when you talk to people over the radio, you help to get them to change their part of it. And eventually, you can have coherence amongst the groups of people. You can become a coherent molecule. That takes a lot of work to become a coherent molecule. You think that you will increase the number, okay, to intend something. But in general, you get destructive interference. We all know this kind of thing because we've all been in the operation where we've, we've been in a committee mm. to try to do something. And you think, oh, my God, I could have done this all by myself <laughs> in about <laughs> one-tenth the time. Yeah. It is destructive interference because we're not coherent with respect to each other. It takes training. You have to become coherent first within yourself. Mm. And then you can become coherent as a group with effort. And we have tools that could probably show when you're approaching coherence, when you can do things as a group. Scientifically. Yeah, yeah, wow. using our instruments. Wow. So it's the path forward is, is all possible. It takes money to do it, of course, but, but the issue is it's possible. Uh, you, you're saying it takes money to do the scientific proof. Uh, yeah, I mean, to do the yeah. work. I mean, you've got to have technicians, you've got to have right. people in size, you've got to have equipment. To get the got data. Got to pay salaries, you know, all those things. But to things. actually do what we need to do, that yep. just is going within and being who we're supposed yes, to be. Yes, and being reflective. Look at yourself. To thine own self be true. So there's no me trying to tell somebody, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't be, as president you should do this, and as such and such you should. Uh, you be a good example. Just be an example. You know, it's just like you look at the business of religions, all kinds of religions. The 
The grand commandment is, love thy God with all thy heart and mind and soul and thy neighbor as thyself. That's all that's needed. If you can do that, that's enough. And the world will change. Yeah, if everybody does that, by gosh, and really does it, the world will definitely change. Yeah. Mm. You are changing our world. I'm trying to. And uh, sounds like you started long time ago, maybe even 40 years ago. Yeah, sure. And you've been beating a drum that you have certainly become. Yeah. And by being who you are, you are helping us become be, who be, we are. Be the example that you want to see in the world. Yeah. Otherwise, you're compromised. We've been talking to Dr. William Tiller, who I forgot to mention was one of the teachers in What the Bleep Do We Know, a film that we recommend with the caveat yeah. of yeah. what Dr. <laughs> Tiller shared with us and so much of what you shared with us. He's Dr. Uh, Emeritus, uh, Professor Emeritus at Stanford University, and a pleasure and a delight Good. to talk to you. Thank for you for too. sharing your information. Great fun. I'm Philippe Voltaggio with Life Changes. My pleasure. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, okay. <laughs>